his, his very first accomplishment actually was the influenza vaccine. He had just come out of medical training and uh, uh, Pearl the bombing of Pearl Harbor occurred. And there was a real uh, rush or push to develop an influenza vaccine because during World War I, uh, almost as many uh, young men died of, of influenza uh, that was during the great influenza epidemic or pandemic of 1918 as, as died in the war. So uh, Salk joined, um, joined Thomas Francis Jr., who was a, a pretty esteemed virologist at the University of Michigan. And uh, together uh, they made and tested the first successful influenza vaccine. Influenza had multiple strains. And not only that, they could mutate. So that if you were really gonna try to prevent influenza, you had to have a shot that covered multiple, multiple different uh, strains of influenza. And that was almost impossible. Uh, and Salt came up with the clever idea of adding mineral oil uh, to the shot, which enhanced the uh, immune response and allowed them to put multiple strains on one shot. Um, he, he was really planning to make a uh, totally universal influenza uh, vaccine, which we clearly don't even have today. And, uh, but he was, he was really uh, political maneuverings of kind of the senior uh, virologists uh, around the world uh, put a put a kind of a damper on that. And when he got drawn into the polio vaccine world, he uh, put his research on influenza aside. Multiple sclerosis came after polio when he was first at the Salk Institute. And everyone was saying, what's next, what's next? And he said he was setting out to harness the immune system, which really most people didn't know what in the world he was talking about. Um, and to him, that meant uh, really going after two diseases, one cancer in which the immune system has failed, and uh, another multiple sclerosis in which the immune system destroys one's own nervous tissue. Uh, his work on uh, cancer never panned out. Uh, but he did come up uh, working uh, with uh, the National uh, Multiple Sclerosis Society. He came up with a therapeutic agent uh, that could halt this devastating progression uh, that we know of in multiple sclerosis. Uh, he was getting ready to do a larger trial when he hit a blind alley, and no matter who he gave it to, uh, they developed allergic reactions. Uh, he ran out of funding, and he really had to abandon that area of research. Uh, the third major area <clears throat> was when he was in his 70s. And by now, he had his lab had been shut down at the Salk Institute. Um, but he was very concerned about the number of young men who were dying from this mysterious disease called, uh, HIV, by, caused by HIV. And so he entered the AIDS arena. Um, many of the scientists kind of snickered, here's an old man trying to regain his former glory. Uh, whereas. Uh, other scientists thought that his ideas were somewhat innovative and, and certainly inspirational. Um, so he helped form a company and he developed a therapeutic uh, vaccine. Not very many other people were working on a vaccine at the time, so he kind of pushed ahead. And this therapeutic vaccine was designed to uh, lengthen the time between HIV uh, infection and the development of uh, full-blown AIDS. And the initial work looked very promising. Uh, but he had, uh, in trying to do a larger national trial, had reached an impasse with the FDA when, when he suddenly died. But he did do one thing, I think probably if you think about where's his place in the history of AIDS, um, it's probably that he attracted the media by being who he was. And, uh, and through that, uh, kind of informed the public uh, that AIDS wasn't a disease of, of gay men, but it was a disease that they all had to be concerned about.